Right, so in today's video, we are going to change the valve stem seals in a Land Rover two and a quarter petrol engine. So what I've got on the table in front of me is the cylinder head and the rocker cover. So the reason for doing this is that the current two and a quarter Land Rover um, short wheelbase that I have, I don't know the history of the engine. It runs well. Um, but because I don't know it, I want to go through some maintenance and changing the valve stem seals is something I've done a few times before and I think it's worthwhile doing if you don't know the history. The reason for changing the valve stem seals is because what can happen is if they've not been changed over time, they become hard, they become brittle and oil can seep back past the seal, damage the chamber and then once the pistons start firing up and down, it gets burnt off and it comes through the back of the exhaust. Uh, normally in a, in a blue smoke. It's a relatively simple job if you've got the right tools. Rocker cover. And the reason it's called your rocker cover is because when you take it off, this is where you have your rocker assembly. Okay? So this comprises of a shaft that goes all the way across the top. And on this shaft, there is one, two, three, four because there's four cylinders, there are four pairs of rocker arms. And as your pistons are going up and down, what happens is through combustion, these your valves are opening and closing, and what these rockers do is they sit on top of the valves through these springs, and it's inside here that you have the valve stem seals. The little tip, okay? This rocker assembly is held on to the top of the cylinder head by these bolts. There's one, two, three, four, and five. If you were to undo those and then lift the assembly up, what would happen is there are springs in the middle and the whole thing would just come apart. So what I suggest is in between the two rocket arms, what you do is you put a zip tie or a cable tie around it, squeeze it in. So what happens is when you then take the whole assembly off like this, you can see the zip ties on there it stops it from coming apart okay so now we have exposure to the valve springs the way that these operate is fairly simple you have a spring that sits on the top of the cylinder head underneath is one of your valves now it's either an inlet valve or an exhaust valve, and we'll go through those afterwards. That comes up through the cylinder head, okay? And then this spring sits on the top, like you can see it there. The way that it's held into place is with one of these. Now what it is, it's a split, as in it's split into two collet and what happens is you have to compress this spring in order to get access to the collet to take it out the collet locks it all into place compressing the springs is not an easy thing it's not something you can just do by hand so you have to have a special tool which is one of these okay now hopefully you can see on the top here that is designed so that when you slide it over the spring like this, it presses the spring down, it allows you to get access to those little collets, take them out, then you undo this and the spring comes off. The way that it works, you slide the top half over the spring, okay, using this bit of adjustment here, you get it lined up, you then press this underneath, and what happens is it compresses the spring, we can take the little split cotters out, collets, and then we can take the whole valve off. Right, so we've got the fork at the top. The fork slides over the top of the spring, and then round the underside, it's crucial that it pushes up against the valve that you're actually taking off. Don't go across to the other one, because it isn't gonna work. You've obviously got to stop that in place. Pop that onto there. Add a little bit of pressure. Once you squeeze it, 
you'll see that you've then exposed the split collets. You can pop them out like so. Undo the handle, put your hand over the top just so the spring doesn't go flying. Remove the tool. The spring will come off with its top washer. And out that comes the other side. And then as before, we take the seal off. So just to show the difference between the two kinds of seals, you see this one here. So this is the first valve that I took off. And if we look at the hole there, we can see that it's smaller and it's carboned up. So we know this is an exhaust one. So the exhaust seal themselves. Now these are actually fairly new. Somebody has done a top end rebuild at some point on this. And I can tell that from the head gasket as well. Put that into focus. But let's look at the difference between the two. So that's the exhaust one. Then the inlet one has got a little tiny spring around the top. It's also a bit more domed on the top. So that's the exhaust one. It's flat. And that's the inlet one and it's domed and it has a little tiny spring just in that recess there look so when it comes to putting the new ones on you need to make sure that where it sits is nice and clean and then you will literally just pop them on it's that simple well, I'm obviously going to replace all of these for new but that's it for placing them nice and easy okay so we've give everything a good clean i'm really pleased actually it's, it's in good condition this is it's not it's not had a hard life at all so as i said before what i'm going to do is reseat all the valves now then turn this over and start cleaning the other side as well. It's crucial, obviously, you clean all the carbon deposits out of here before you start lapping the valves, the valve seats back in, because otherwise you're going to get carbon build up and, and grit and things in the way. It's just going to cause you problems. So we've cleaned the face now. Um, I'm still going to give this a, a clean with some emery cloth or wet and dry or something like that, just to get a nice shiny finish on it. And we'll lap or regrind all the valves back in. That idiot will just keep being an idiot. Loves the camera. And um, yeah, so it's a good way to spend the rainy afternoon, this. But you can see here, this, this is where it's got to sit into. So again, we're looking there for any scoring or pitting. Probably looks worse on camera than it actually is because we've got some reflections and there's a lot of carbon build up on there, but it's actually, they're not too bad at all. But to regrind them, what we're going to do, we're going to now push that in. And then from this side, okay, we're going to twist it. And you can hear it. So you can hear that noise that it makes. That it's making a good seal. Now I'm going to go ahead and do all these anyway, so I know that it's been done. If we now pop that out, okay, we can now see, look, that's starting to clean away the crud. What we have got is a little bit of a line, which suggests to me there's some grit or some gunk on the valve itself. So in this instance, what I'm going to do, I mentioned it before, Good old elbow grease.
give it a clean. And with some kitchen roll, just gonna wipe that edge so we can have a bit more of a look. Okay, and then we'll do the same to the valve itself. Clean all of that. So I'm happy there's no contaminants on there now. So I'm going to get some more grinding paste and just smear that around the edge again. Like so. Pop it back in. Again, you can tell by the noise that it's making that it's actually got, it's got a decent seat already, but. Now I'm no master mechanic, okay? I've learned this through my father, father-in-law, YouTube, Haynes manuals, etc. And I don't claim to be a master mechanic either. But these Land Rover engines are pretty robust and they allow the likes of me and hopefully you to understand a decent level of mechanics and can complete tasks like this without too much worry of, of damaging the engine. I wouldn't touch a modern engine. I've got no interest in touching them either. All right. So... Good pleased with that right so they're all out and what I tend to do is lay them out then on a piece of kitchen roll just so they're easy to see count all the collets make sure I've got everything all accounted for which we have and then what I've started to do now is just to spray loads and loads of elbow grease on here A trusty helper. Spray loads of elbow grease on here just to start to break down all that grime and everything. So you can see here, look. So as I said earlier on, this is where the valve stem seals locate onto there. Okay. And again, I've just took these off in the same order. So I'll lay them down now next to the valves themselves so we know how to put them on when we renew them. What I've done is give this just a, a real thorough clean. Um, I've used a heavy duty engine degreaser. I've used elbow grease. I've used a little bit of WD-40. I've used the WD-40 um, as I've started to, to sand this. I'm using, I think it was, yeah, P3000, uh, really, really fine. Um, I'm not taking anything off this at all apart from carbon deposits off the cylinder head itself. Um, as I said, it's been tested, it doesn't need skimming, it's nice and level, it's not warped at all, so I'm just, just giving it a clean, that's all. So what I'm going to do now is lap the valves back in with the grinding paste. What I didn't mention before is uh, this this tin of grinding paste actually splits into two on this end it's a really fine paste and on the other end it's a more coarse paste so I'll just choose as I go through in terms of what I do um, if these were really bad which I've had before I think I've said what I'd do is I put I push the valve through and then I put a drill on the end and spin that round um, but I don't have to do these on, that on these. The first one that I was a bit concerned about because it was sticking, um, I think is just a little tiny lip. I've managed to get rid of that. I've got a Dremel if I need to, but I'm hoping just by regrinding it, it'll be okay. So that's the next job. Um, 
but we're getting ready for it to be nearly nearly ready for reassembly so this is the last dirty job now and then it'll have one final big clean with some petrol um probably paint the outside as well but maybe afterwards um so for now grind the valves back in and then give it a good clean Well, that took a little bit longer than expected. The problem was the exhaust valves were really carboned up and there's still a bit of carbon in here I need to clean out um, and I'll do that after. So I ended up cleaning the surfaces with a Y brush on the Dremel and using the grinding paste, cleaned all the surfaces off and then what I ended up doing was using the drill. So pop the valve through, pop the drill on the other end and use the drill to spin it not a particularly fast speed and what it's done is obviously it's ground all those new valve seats so they're all now nice clean shiny and they've got a good seal on them it's crucial that you do this the only thing to consider at this point is that when you put the engine back together you might find in fact you're probably going to find that you will need to um, adjust the tappets because the clearances will be different because you were talking point something of a millimeter but it can make all the difference on how it runs so because these have been seated, the valve is now going to sit closer and therefore the, the top of the valve stem is going to come a little bit higher and therefore your rockers might be out. So your tappet clearance will need to be adjusted, something I'm going to do anyway. So that's it for now. I'm going to fi finish cleaning all this cylinder head up, but everything's now kind of ready. Um, you can see there, look, hopefully the chamfered edges on the valves themselves. They're nice and clean and ready to go. So this will stay here now, ready for reassembly once it's all cleaned. I'm just going to just pause it for a second just to try and show you so i've got the first the first three are in i'm just going to try and show you this one it's a little bit fiddly but once this spring compressor is on you can actually manipulate it a little bit you need to pop the little collet in on one side i say it's a bit fiddly like that okay and then it is as simple as letting that spring off slowly and that's it so you can see now that the collets are holding these in place and it's as simple as that so we'll carry on do the rest Right, so the new head gasket is on. The head itself is now in place. It's not bolted down. All I've done is put one bolt to this side just to hold it into place. I've just put the rocker arm assembly back on, as I said before, but what I've done is put all of the push rods into place. So you can see as the rocker arms come back, they locate into these. So you wanna make sure that they are now in line all the way down. Now that they're all in place, what we can do is we can now fix these, torque them down to the right setting. Don't know what it is on the top of my head, you have to check your manual. And then the rocker arm assembly is in place and then we can just take these jubilees off, let the springs come back out and then all this will be in place. All right, so that's the rocker assembly fully torqued down. The head is now fully torqued down on the new head gasket. 
So what I'm going to do now is just snip these off. So then all now all out of place. And what we want to do now is you can just see here it's not lined up quite right so you're just going to give it a very gentle tap just to put it back into line and then what it'll do it's just because the spring has been compressed if you look at the spring there that's it it just needs to be pushed back out so just a very light tap nothing excessive remember this is cast so you hit this too hard and it's going to break. So you don't want to be doing that. Okay, and then what we can do is just by turning the fan at the front, we can just turn it over with our hands nice and easy just to make sure it will get tight in places because of the compression. We're just making sure that all these valves, springs are opening and closing. What you can do is you can put a starter handle down there uh, onto the starter dog or a great big nut if it's really hard to turn you should be able to do it as long as your fan, by, fan belt is tight enough you should be able to do it off the fan here so I've just turned that over to make sure every single one of these is opening and closing which it is which is great so what I'll do now is um, it, it'll be tomorrow another day is I'm going to put the rocker cover back on that's had some paint at the minute so which is why it can't go on now then I'll put the manifold back on with the new gaskets on there and then in a few days time, uh, carburetor back on, water pump. I've ordered a new thermostat because I checked that and it wasn't working properly and put it all back together, get it firing up. And hopefully at the end of this video, um, albeit it'll be a few days after this recording here and now, but you will see the engine running. So there she is, engine back together. Uh, we had to put a new loom on this. So th this is um, one of our other videos. This is the Land Rover Series 3 short wheelbase county station wagon. And we've done a, a kind of Tomb Raider build on this. It's a bit dirty at the minute, but this is, uh, this is the one I'm referring to. So this is the engine, um, the valves that, uh, that we've done on this one. So as you can hear, ticking over nicely now, nice and quiet. So as you can see in here, the engine is now all put back together. Manifold back on, water pump back on, new thermostat, carburetor. Just got a temporary battery over there at the minute because I'm charging the other one. fast vehicles these and obviously we won't drive it fast anyway but um pleased with how that sounds sounds nice we just started off from cold they can be a bit lumpy from cold sometimes um but there we go hopefully that video has been of some use We've gone through the whole process. Um, my recommendation is, depending on mileage, I probably do about 2,000 miles in my series a year. It's not a huge amount. I'll check the valve clearances once a year, just as part of the routine maintenance. You know, they're old, they're old engines, they're old vehicles, but they are very robust. So give it a go, and um, hopefully the video, video has been of some use and. As I said before, this particular Land Rover, you'll start to see it in lots of videos coming up. Um, this, this Tomb Raider one that we built. Pop a picture at the end as to where we are right now. But we're going to be competing in some events soon. And this, this is going to be the heart of it right here. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching as always. And we'll see you again soon.